Hello everybody! Today we'll be talking about the recently revealed Nintendo Switch. James, your thoughts? <laughs> that and more on today's <laughs> episode of the Sky Jam Podcast. Oh my god! So the Nintendo Switch is a, was revealed uh, yesterday for us, two days ago for you. And I am in love with this thing. It is unbelievably amazing. Yeah. It's everything I w ever wanted in a system, either console or handheld, and it just happens to be both. So... Yep. <laughs> yeah. If, if I were to, like, think of one thing to have, you know, in a system... Like, if someone mentioned to me, like, what about, like, home console games on the go? I'd be like, yeah, that's the one thing I want. Like, that would be the thing. Yeah, and if somebody was like, hey, what about handheld games on the big screen? I'd be like, yeah, that's that's the thing I want. <laughs> and now both of these things. Both. It's it's both. Oh, man. There's so much... This means so much for, like, everything going forward. Yeah. I feel like this moment has never happened for me before. And I'm really excited because... Explain. When the Wii was revealed, everybody was like, this is revolutionary, this is the future of gaming, it, motion controls, it's happening, virtual yeah. reality is a thing. But I was never super into the that whole thing. Like, I was never be huge into the motion controls. It was fun. I mean, games like Elibits used it amazingly mm -hmm. and whatnot. And then the Wii U came around, and I was like, oh my god, this is it. This is, like, the kind of thing that I am so into. But nobody else, like, even knew it was a system at first. It was really confusing because of the poor marketing. Yeah. And uh, it was just a whole mess. And then there weren't enough games for it in the first year. It was not the same. And now this, like, I have this feeling inside me, like, this just changed gaming forever. Like, I, know, I truly yeah. deeply feel that. I know what you mean, exactly. I know that's a big, like, statement to make, but... This is that kind of thing. I totally agree. There's there are so many decisions that they seem to be making that are really smart. Really smart. Nintendo is the only company right now that makes systems and games. They do hardware and software. They're the only one that does that. Mm -hmm. uh, out of, like, you know, the big three. Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo has always split its time. Half of the company was making console games, and the other half was making handheld games. Yeah. With one system that is both of those, we're going to get, like, twice as many games on this one system. Because all that time and effort that goes into making two systems worth of games is going into just the Switch now. Yeah. It's it's a lot more... Um, it's it's just smarter that way to have it's everything, so focused, smart. everything focused on one thing. And they already, like, own the handheld market. Like, yeah. there is no competitor. Hands, hands I don't down. know what a Vita looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty hands down. They got the handheld thing. Um, nice hand-based alliteration. <laughs> so the Nintendo Switch, um, formerly known as the NX. Yeah, it's 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 crazy just to not call it the NX anymore. It took me a little while to get used to it. I love the name, but I was still calling it the NX because that was like, yeah, that that's what we muscle memory. Yeah, she's like, oh, the NX. When's the NX coming out? The NX, NX, NX. And then I was like, Nintendo the Switch. Nintendo Switch. Click. They're, they're really switching it up. Oh, man, that was forced. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, just the whole gracious. thing of the, you know, the sliding of the sides of the controller into, like, a bigger gamepad-type controller, and then you could take that wherever you want. Or like, put them on, like, a controller holster and have, like, when you're on the big screen, it... Yeah, and you can also just use them both separately, um... Either yourself or with two people, each holding one of the things. Yeah, and you hold them sideways when you do them separate. Like, it yeah. seems like it's so able to be like, oh, you want to play it like this? Yeah, I can do that. And then it, like, stretches its arm over its head or whatever. Like, I'm making a <laughs> metaphor here as if it's a person, but... Uh, I can see it. <laughs> it's like a Transformer. It is like a Transformer. It is like, or like Legos, because it comes apart into all these different pieces, and you could just, however you want to put them together... Yeah, what, what Go are, ahead, play like, Breath of the Wild like that. Yeah, they're giving you so much variety, so many options to play how you want to play. And that's, I think it's so cool. That's so Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, they're just doing really smart things, I think. Um, and they also have like a pro controller, like a pro controller type. I saw that too, I'm, you know I'm going to get a bunch of those. Yeah, and what I thought what was interesting about that is like that, you know, all the controllers have like a D-pad where, like, the buttons are separated. Yeah, I saw that too. It's and the, like the C-stick on the N64, the yellow buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot like that. And But the Pro Controller has, like, a, an actual D-pad. Yeah, it does. I'm, I'm curious as to why they decided to do that. 
You know, I feel like the type of person who's going to invest in a Pro Controller is probably going to be more comfortable using an old-fashioned D-pad. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Yeah. And, like, the separate buttons D-pad on the other controllers is so smart, because when they're taken apart and, like, each person is holding one, it's the same layout. Mm -hmm. The D-pad are the ABXY. Yeah. That's so smart. It's so smart. (laughs) Like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that's genius! <laughs> yeah, and the sticks aren't level with each other, again, so that when you have them as two different controllers, they are the sticks on the same side. It's, yeah. Oh, I can't get over every, like, every time I look at it, I notice another design choice, and I'm like, that was the right choice to make! <laughs> yeah. Wow! I totally agree. Um, there's, there's nothing I love more than the whole on-the-go gamepad, like, take-it-with-you aspect of it. That's, like, my favorite part of the whole thing. Um... You know, people have expressed concerns about the battery life of that, and I've heard good things in terms of that, actually, because I think it has a built-in fan, which helps with the battery life, Okay. I'm sure the cartridges also help with that, so... I mean, the 3DS lasts a damn long time on its own, I imagine yeah. this thing will, too. I'm yeah. not that worried. And, like, it's able to run games in HD wherever, so I, I, mm-hmm. I imagine... You know, it sounds like it would take up a lot of battery life, but I think they're handling it the right way with the, the fan and the cartridges yeah. there. Yeah. Also, it charges while you're playing on the big screen. Like... Yeah, that's true. Because I imagine when it's in that dock, it's charging. I, mm. I can only assume that's the charger. And, uh, I mean, the 3DS had to process, not in HD, but two screens worth of footage at all times. Yeah. And with this one only having to deal with one screen, I feel like that's going to make it a little bit less load in that way. That's... Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, mm. Yeah, also just not two screens. This is yeah interesting. That explains <laughs> why Mario Maker got ported to the 3DS while games like Splatoon and Mario Kart 8 are getting ported to the uh, Switch. Mm. Yeah, but what about Splatoon? Because Splatoon utilizes that second screen quite a lot, doesn't it? It has the map on it and you could touch it to super jump. I'm sure they'll have like a different way of doing that. Mm. Maybe, you'll have, maybe you could press a button and it'll bring the map up and you could just select one of your teammates to jump to. Because you can only ever jump to your teammates or the set, the things that your teammates point down that you could jump to. I, I'm forgetting the word. <laughs> and I know you're not super familiar with Splatoon multiplayer, but... Um, there are, like, different checkpoints you can hit to? Yeah, yeah, c- pretty much. Okay. You, like, one of your teammates can equip, or you can equip these checkpoints. You could, like, drop three at a time, and any of your teammates could jump to them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, but also with Splatoon... And with Mario Kart 8, which were both shown off in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should do things in order, but I just was tossed out there that those are not the same games on the Wii U. There is new stuff in both of those. Those are enhanced ports, at least. Yeah, we Sequels at best, but I think they're enhanced ports. I think so, yeah. Um, And I'm totally... I kind of would rather have it be enhanced ports than sequels that don't change much, because... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, rather than have, like, a whole new game that they spent a lot of time on that didn't change right. that much. That'll come... At, we're gonna get Splatoon with a 2 in the logo eventually anyway. <laughs> True. I, yeah, if, if it's not called that, I'll be very surprised. Um, oh, it's happening. We, we might as well talk about just the games that were shown off briefly. That's kind of what trailer. I'm most excited for. I mean, all, the fact that you could go on the go or in-house is, like, unbelievably exciting, but what makes it better is the games that you can go on the go or in your house with. Yeah, Totally. Should we just hit them up in order of the trailer? Sure. I mean, just starting with Breath of the Wild, taking that wherever the hell you want sounds incredible. <laughs> I want to like, I want to play it on the big screen, but at the same time, I want to play it like out in the woods somewhere, which is very accessible Definitely. where we live. So Definitely. That's something I'll be doing. When we could talk about Breath of the Wild forever, just because we know so much little about it we, we, from E3. We might have our own podcast about Breath of the Wild. Maybe. I'm sure we will at some point. Yeah. So... Uh, either way, we'll play it on the channel as soon as it comes out. So yeah, you can expect there that, will be for sure. No shortage of that. Um, and then we got like a new. We got a little look at a new Mario game. We did get a new Mario <laughs> game. Oh my god, it looks so good. They showed so little, but like there, there was the Mexican Day of the Dead looking area. Yeah, yeah. Which was so colorful and vibrant, and I can't wait to play it. Yeah. And then there was that other thing where a bullet bill came out, and there was like some rocks made out of clear. Yeah. In the distance. I think that might have been the same world somehow. Yeah, it, it actually could be. They both looked kind of like deserty, I guess? Yeah. I, just from what I saw, it reminds me of a combination of 64, Galaxy, and 3D World. 
Yeah. I don't know where it will lean between those three, because all three of those are dramatically different games. Mm-hmm. But... My guess would be it's following the general, you know, with whatever changes the game brings, it's following the general 64 Sunshine Galaxy route, I think. I guess so. Well, there's some confusion as to whether or not 3D World is on that route. Um, I consider them separate, personally. I do too, but it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, uh, it's close. It is close. Either way, I mean, I'm, of course, still hoping for 64 more than anything else, but it... Gosh, it looks so good. Yeah. I was, like, looking at the footage frame by frame, and Mario has so many tiny animations on him that add so much detail. Like, when he gets to a certain amount of speed, his fingers flick up and his hands yeah. come out as he runs. And then when he stopped and he started to turn, his hat kind of bounced on his head and, like, went forward a little bit. That's cool. I didn't notice that. It, it's, like, such a little thing. <laughs> and it's so hard to see it in the footage, but... Oh, they, man! Yeah, like, they showed us just enough. It looks so good! It really does. I love, like you said, the whole, like, uh, like Hispanic-influenced Day of the Dead-looking yeah. town. Yeah, there weren't toads everywhere. <laughs> True. I've been playing a lot of Color Splash. <laughs> and I love it. It's fantastic. But I have a lot of very specific complaints about it, as much yeah. as I do enjoy that game. It's a very, very good game. <laughs> and the game kind of makes fun of itself, right? It does. It absolutely does. Uh, we'll talk about Color Splash another time. Yeah. We're talking about the uh, w- Switch right now. That's right. I almost called it the NX yeah. again. I will say, uh, just real quick, Color Splash is much better than I thought it was going to be going into it. It. I'm so glad I got it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Please let the next pick Mario be an RPG, though. <laughs> like, Color Splash is super fun. I'm really off topic. Say <laughs> okay. next topic, James. Um... Anything else to say about Splatoon? Uh, Splatoon and Mario Kart 8, I'll at least go over the changes for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. Uh, So they were both shown off. Yeah. Uh, They seem to be enhanced ports, and with Splatoon, uh, there was at least one new map. There was the addition of, uh, it looks like, two new equipment slots, although one of them might just be aesthetic, and that is new haircuts, which is something people have been dying for in Splatoon. I, I definitely noticed that, yeah. That That's something I've seen so many people like, oh, man, why can't, like, ah, oh, I wish they'd do that. There's only the two. There mm. are so ma- There are at least eight new ones, and I imagine there's going to be even more than that. Yeah. And pants are an equipment slot now. <laughs> there were pants. different and unique pants, another thing people have asked for, which... Mm. First of all, that adds two mu- more layers of customization to every squid kid. There's now five different things you could change on them. Hat, head, I mean, headgear, hair, shirt, pants, shoes. And assuming at least four of those, not all of those but the hair, will do statistical stuff to your squid. Because they all have different hmm. power-ups and stuff. So adding the pants in it just adds another layer onto how different each squid's abilities can be. Yeah. That's, so, that is really cool. I actually. really look forward to that. Um, this is just a random thought I just had, but like, do you think they'll add more colors of teams you could be? They, I, I'm sure they will. Throughout Splatoon's existence already, like you know, they kept updating it with weapons and clothes and maps and stuff. Yeah, for a long time. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh. There were new colors coming in all the time. That's awesome. Uh, but you never choose your color. So it, right. that's not as big of a thing. I was just curious if, like, maybe they'll add... I'm sure they will. ...some other colors. There were some Splatfests that had colors specific for that Splatfest and then never showed up again. Like, mm. you could only play with red ink during the Pokemon Red vs. Blue Splatfest. It was never red Ooh. anywhere else ever again because that looked like blood. Oh, Same yeah. with white <laughs> ink, which was only available for like, a Splatfest or two in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need to go into why that's not No, nah, it's like blue. Right. Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, and then you mentioned Mario Kart, there's... Oh, right, Mario Kart 8. So, first obvious thing... King Boo, right? King Boo. Yeah. Also, less obvious, each player can hold two items, which hasn't been in Mario Kart since, I think, Double Dash. Yeah. And that's really new and interesting. That's exciting. I'm not gonna say, like, oh my gosh, maybe they'll have the Double Dash mechanic back, but just the two-item thing alone is a huge, like, strategy thing. Yeah. I think Double Dash is still, to this day, my favorite Mario Kart. So yeah, me too. I think it had so many great things about it. I um, love the tracks in 8. I think the courses in 8 are my favorite, but I think Double Dash as a game, as a whole, is my favorite one as well. Yeah, I'd agree with that, actually. Um, and I, I love the courses from Double yeah. Dash, too. But, oh, um, speaking of courses from Double Dash and in Mario Kart 8, the sh- stage they showed was Yoshi's Island from Double Dash in Mario Kart 8, 
Most which was only really- available during in the DLC of Mario Kart 8. So that looks like the DNC, DLC will be included with this oh, expansion game. Cool. Yeah. Which has a lot of implications about Smash Brothers. Yes, before we get to Smash... We won't get to that yet, but we're going to get to that. Before we get to Smash, I have one question. Um, yes. With Splatoon and Mario Kart, do you think they are just updates, or do you think they are sequels? Just Updates. Sh- you think they're updates? It's the, the, the same visuals. Yeah. Like, maybe polished a little bit more, but like the HUD is the same in Mario Kart 8, Splatoon looked like the same HUD. I am... Mm. Certain that they are just updates, and I'm totally fine with that. There were a lot of rumors going around before this was announced months ago that a bunch of the most popular Wii U games were getting ported over to the new system, mm. uh, which makes sense because they put a lot of time and effort into these games for a system that didn't sell well. Unfortunately, I love the yeah, Wii U. Yeah. Uh, so giving more people a chance to play them is smart. And we saw Woolly World and uh, Mario Maker got ported to the 3DS because mm-hmm. they wouldn't work on this new system, and so the 3DS is handling them. Uh, at yeah, least that Mario makes Maker sense. wouldn't. And I think, like, we're about to, we'll talk about Smash, but I think other games are also going to get these kind of ports. Totally. Beyond just Smash and the ones that are already announced. So, like, what other Wii U or 3DS games, I guess, do you think could make it over? That's an interesting question. Uh, could and want are definitely two different <laughs> I would agree. groups. Yeah. yeah. Want, my number one choice is Pikmin 3, of course. It's mm. my favorite game. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see Xenoblade Chronicles X make it over, but that was a huge game. Yeah. And I don't know how well that would work, because that ate up a ton of memory just to play that game. It did. Um, I think the thing with the cartridges too is that allows for more memory space that's that is very true yeah um so yeah but also those two i'm not sure what the best selling games on the system were i guess 3d world 3d world will probably get ported yeah i guess with xenoblade it's a it's a little bit more niche for like specific i mean so is pikmin all right true we we love them both but that's true um yeah Ooh. i don't know um maybe star fox zero was just standard controls (laughs) Oh, yeah, that wouldn't have gyro at all. Does, does the gamepad have gyro in the Switch? I don't think so. Because yeah. when you play it on the big screen, you don't use the pad. I guess not, yeah. Oh, well. No, or, no I huge guess, loss. <laughs> I, w- I wonder if you could, though. It probably you... will have it optionally like Splatoon did. Because mm. the gamepad had gyro. Right. So, um, yeah, maybe it will. Hmm. I'm not opposed to it either way. Because uh, like, even Splatoon used gyro a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, Gyro is super helpful in Splatoon. So, like, I guess they wouldn't be opposed to other games like Star Fox Zero that have Gyro to not be included, you know. Yeah, hmm. Like, I don't know if they... I'm gonna look at the Wii U games you have right now, real quick, just to refresh my mind on the library of Wii U. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. So, yeah, Star Fox would be great. I don't think that's one they'll bring over, I don't think so either. It didn't do particularly well, unfortunately. We both love it. But I would, I would totally love that if they did. It's my favorite Star Fox game, actually. Um, Same with Xenoblade. I would the other Wii U game that you have that we haven't already talked about is Captain Toad, which I don't think would get ported. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, hmm. What about 3DS games? Oh, I had. That's a good point. Like, I think there were. This was part of the whole rumor thing, but they were saying how Pokemon for the first time could be not handheld exclusive. Well, that's not so much a rumor as the CEO of Game Freak. Uh, said, yes, we are making Pokemon games for the new system. Oh, great. I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was before it was announced. Okay. That was like two weeks ago or something. So then I don't know if that means a main series Pokemon Gen game. 8 Pokemon! <laughs> Gen 8 Pokemon! Yeah, well, di- okay, it could be... I don't think that... Sun and Moon will get ported. You don't think so? Pokemon has a history of being the last games on each handheld. Crystal was the last Game Boy Color game, uh, I, as far as non-third-party titles go. Mm-hmm. Uh... Like, Emerald was the last Game Boy Advance. They always are the last... The Black and White 2 were the last standard DS. They're always the last games to jump to the new system. Yeah, well, like, things like Pokemon like X and Y weren't at the very end of the 3DS's lifespan, obviously. No, but Sun and Moon are. Yeah. So, you're right. I I guess I just don't know that confirmation from the CEO of Game Freak. Does that mean it's a main series Pokemon game, or does that mean it's going to be a spin-off like Mystery Dungeon or you know, something like that? Well, I think the answer is both. Oh, oh, wait, actually, another Wii U game that I'm certain will get ported. Pocket Tournament with all the DLC that's coming out in the arcades in Japan. Ooh, I think that's absolutely happening. That could happen. Because Pocket on the go would be so great. That would Sorry. be cool. Uh, and it's perfect for two-player. 
Exactly. So. I mean, uh, what is it? Dark Rye and Scissor are already in the Japan arcades, and no word of them coming to the Wii U version. I think they're and there's slots for two more de- uh, characters in mm. the game beyond them. I think four characters are coming to the Switch, maybe even more if they bump it up. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I I know this is this is talking more in the future, not like at all launch games, but. Um, okay. Just other game. Think about other games that you would love to see on, on the Switch eventually. Okay. Not, not necessarily ported, just like from this franchise. I thought about this, and yeah. I could give you a rundown of what I think the entire first year of the Switch is going to be <laughs> from Nintendo. Go for it. Okay. Launch. We've got New Mario, New Zelda, which, and I want to point this out because it's a huge deal. The first Nintendo system ever to launch with a New Mario and a New Zelda. Well, we don't know if Mario's going to be launch. It's gonna be launch. It was in the trailer. You think I, so? I, I'm believing that everything in that trailer is launch. It they could, they never be. show off a non-launch game before the system comes out uh, in the initial trailer. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, but yeah, I look back. There has never been a Nintendo system launching with Mario and Zelda together. That's that is interesting. Unbelievably huge. That's it's a, always yeah. been one or the other. It's always one of them, but it's never both of them. That's interesting. Um, so that's happening. Yeah. Uh, I think. The other games shown off there, I won't get into third party, but like Skyrim, oh, holy crap, Skyrim, <laughs> yeah. that NBA thing, uh, mm-hmm. the ports of the Wii U games, that's all coming first year. I think the rest of the first year will contain retro, whatever Retro Studios is working on. Mm-hmm. They have a new IP in the works. I think it's coming very soon, maybe not launch, but like within the first few quarters after launch. Maybe summer. Maybe summer. Something like that. I think Pikmin 4 is summer. 2017. Could be. Mimoto has confirmed they're working on it. It's not the 3DS one that has a different title. Pikmin 4 is going to be on the Switch almost... Like, I, yes, certainly. They're not going to put it on the Wii U at this point. No. And I think it's coming out in the summer because Pikmin games release in the summer. Mm. Uh, we're going to... I'm going to guess within the first year we're going to get Animal Crossing. Uh, like a new major Animal Crossing for the Switch. That'd be cool. Probably in the fall. They have all the models from Amiibo Party. They could just port those in. I think that'll happen. Uh, I think we'll get a WarioWare within the first year, because oh, those are often very early into a game cycle, like Smooth Move was, like Game and Wario was. That's true. That's they true. often show off like what the system can do, and we might get a Wii Sports slash Nintendo Land-like thing that's a collection of games. That makes sense. That's very Nintendo. Uh, beyond that, I gotta think about it for first year. Maybe a Kirby game. Maybe like near the holidays. Mm. Maybe a Kirby thing. I'm I- just trying to think of what like studios Nintendo has that aren't that didn't just put a game out. Yeah. You, yeah, you're definitely thinking about it logically. Um, mm-hmm. And I think everything you just said is very possible and likely. Um, you actually mentioned a lot of the ones that, like, I have thought of. And, like... Okay. The ones that I ha- that you didn't list are, like, more so on, like, the want instead of, you know, what's mm-hmm. most likely. Let me hear it. But I think it would be super cool... If, um, you know, Sakurai mentioned he's working on another project or whatever, I think it would be sick if we got, like, a Kid Icarus Switch game. Oh, shoot. Now, that's very interesting. Sorry to cut you off immediately. Go but for it. When he said his, ne- his... I believe the quote was, my next project is already decided. Mm-hmm. I believe... I personally think he's talking about Smash Brothers for the Switch, the port from Wii U 3DS. That, I think that that's what he's working on. That Although, I would love to see Uprising get, a, like, an HD big screen version. Yeah. Like, it doesn't... Yeah. Like, maybe not even Uprising, just like a new Kid Icarus game, which isn't... Again, not likely to happen, maybe. but I think it would be sick. Sakurai doesn't like making sequels, though. He doesn't? So, no, that's why he left HAL Laboratories, because they were making too many Kirby games. Oh, well... He's been tri- <laughs> he was tricked by Iwata into making every Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a great sentence. <laughs> Look up your history, everybody. It's completely true. Iwata <laughs> announced Brawl before telling Sakurai about it. <laughs> It's hilarious. Oh. Um, okay, let's talk about <laughs> the possibility of Smash on the Switch. Uh, you didn't want to talk about other Switch games? You think actually the, the only other thought? Sorry, the only other thought I had with that is again this would be down the line. Mm-hmm. You know, we recently got a game in this series, but I think at some point during the Switch's lifespan, can I take a guess? Go for it. Metroid Prime 4? That is another one. Yes. Oh, okay. Totally. Okay. One I forgot to mention also. I, I think Prime 4 is coming. I don't think it's first year, because I think Retro is working on whatever they're doing now, and I think they'd still do Prime. I agree. That's one that I didn't even think of that's, like, actually really obvious. Okay, like, I'm sorry. I was so sure you were going with that. No, no. Because Federation that's... Force had the cliffhanger and all that. No, that's absolutely another one for me. Definitely. Uh, what no, were you saying? I'm... Please, Metroid Prime 4. Um, 
The other one I thought of is, like, a Fire Emblem game on the Switch. Oh, that's true. That would be really cool. Oh, man. I, I It will happen eventually. There's no way in hell they're not, because that franchise is just, like, going up in popularity every day. I hope so. Uh, Fates was, like, over a year ago in Japan now. True. Uh, but that company, I don't know how they split their people, but that's Intelligent Systems, and they just put out Color Splash. Okay. Because that's the same company, company that does yeah. Fire Emblem. Okay. So, I think it'll happen. I don't know how soon. But yeah. I, it's definitely happening. And yes! Oh my god! A, fi- a modern Fire Emblem on the big screen would be amazing. Wouldn't that be... Oh, dude! Magical. That would be so <laughs> incredible. We're big yeah. Fire Emblem fans here at huge, Sky Jam. Huge, huge Fire Emblem it's fans. It's unbelievable that we haven't played one on the show yet. <laughs> it's true. Um, we will. Oh yeah. We will. We'll um, play them all. Let's, yeah, let's talk about the possibility of them porting Smash over. Okay. Because so they should do that. It is confirmed <laughs> that Splatoon and Mario Kart 8 are getting additional stuff on the Switch. They're not just regular ports. We already know for certain there's new stuff in those games. Smash Brothers is the n- obvious thing to switch over because it's on the Wii U and the 3DS separately. Yep. So how wonderful would it be to have a Smash Brothers at home or on the go that has the stages from both of those versions. Both of them in HD. Give me Magicat, <laughs> Magicant in HD. I want to see Hyrule Temple on a tiny screen on the go. Just, just... Oh, man. That's yeah. such an exciting prospect. We'd finally more than two Pokemon stages in Smash 4 at any one time. <laughs> Good point. There are six playable Pokemon in two stages. I'm, I don't know if they would bring some 3DS stages over, because I think that would, wouldn't that entail completely redoing them graphically, or at least... Yep, but they're doing new graphics yeah. for these other games anyway. True. I, and they at least have a know. starting point, I feel. They could just res it up and then re, like, work it from there. It's not total ground up. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I would, of course, be way thrilled with that. I, I also think they could just port Smash Wii U just... On the Switch. Just I will, like but I think because the Switch stages. is a handheld and a console, it would be like a combination. Yeah. Also, some of the 3DS stages are just 8-bit graphics, like the F-Zero stage and Kirby stage on That's the 3DS. That's a good point. And those would be super easy to port over. That's a good point. I just don't know about the stages from the 3DS, but it, it could be. You could be okay. totally right. We'll see who's right. If it exists, which I'm it, almost it, certain it does. It I'm saying maybe not all of them, but a lot of 3DS stages. I hope so. I really hope so. Um, and... Do you think they would, I think the answer is yes from both of us, but do you think they would add characters and stages for the, like, Switch exclusive? Wow, you know, I never even thought of adding stages. I only, okay, let's talk (laughs) about that. Because I feel like that's three parts in one that you just threw at us. Pretty much. New stages. Yep. New characters, and then in the new characters categories, it's two groups of returning new characters or just all new care or just like super new characters Correct. that have never been in the Smash Brothers. Yes. W- let's start with returning characters. Okay. Um likely characters that they would bring back. Uh, wolf and Ice Climbers. <laughs> Free Wolf. <laughs> ice Climbers, dude. It's if Wii U 3DS Smash gets a port to the Switch, I would be legitimately appalled if we did not get Wolf and or Ice Climbers back. Yeah. Uh, I would accept Ice Climbers not coming back if there was still some sort of technical limitation, but I don't think there would be because right. it's powerful enough to play Wii U games. Totally. Uh, there's no excuse not to bring Wolf back at this point. I know. Yep. Uh, especially, <laughs> especially now that Star Fox Zero has come out. I was just going to say that, yep. Um, his Smash Final Smash can be him in the panther-like Wolfen. Oh, please. Yes. <laughs> please, yes. Uh, sorry, I'm geeking out about Star Fox. Um, anyway. We're... Uh, yeah, any other returning characters? There's not a lot of them, actually. After, yeah. after Wolf and Ice Climbers, who's left? They did so well in terms of bringing characters back, like Roy. Like, I did not expect Roy when he was announced. I actually cried when Lucas was announced. <laughs> yeah, him. T- he was such a surprise, too. It's like, oh my god. Because we didn't know DLC was going to be a thing then. It was just Mewtwo if you bought both games. Yeah, and it's like, they really do care about us. <laughs> it was like, oh my god. <laughs> Not just they really care about us, they care about Mother, which Nintendo ignored for, like, years and years and years. And yeah. then Lucas is back. And then on top of that, like, I don't know, Ryu, Banner, Ryu, the cl- frickin' Cloud. Cloud Strife <laughs> in Smash Brothers, and Corrin, who was my number two choice for Smash 5 when that <laughs> came out eight, eight years from now. Right. 
<laughs> like, my number one choice was Inkling, still is the case. Number two was Corrin, and we got Corrin anyway. I'm, like, ecstatic. Yeah. Uh, so, other char- returning characters not currently in Smash. Mm. There is the rest of Pokemon trainer, Squirtle and Ivysaur. Probably the biggest, most likely, after Wolf and Ice Climbers, even if it's a big jump to them. Maybe okay. they put Charizard back into a transforming one? I don't know about that. Probably uh, not. I don't think so. I love Squirtle's moveset to death, and I love Ivysaur, but I don't think that's coming back. No. Pichu. Pichu. (laughs) Equally likely of not coming back, it could happen because Sakurai would do that. Young Link would be interesting. Young Link. A separate character from Link. So three Links at that point? Three Links. I think there's a I think there's a higher chance of Breath of the Wild Link getting in as a separate Link than Young Link coming back. Absolutely right about that. (laughs) Which would be amazing. Shirtless Link setting fire to everything. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. (laughs) Uh who else? I know the You big know one. they would do the, that alt, uh, like the Shulk oh, shirtless oh, one. That would be his default, dude. <laughs> his default. <laughs> Forget the blue tunic, nope. Shirtless. Uh, just Link has been sleeping for a hundred <laughs> years. Wake up, Link. Set fire to things. And Link's just kind of screaming, confused, scared, and just <laughs> attacking things. I'm so excited for Breath of the Wild. I've um, never been this excited for a 3D Zelda game as I am with Breath of the Wild. It looks incredible. <laughs> it looks... Actually perfect. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, other returning characters. Any others from Melee that ha- aren't already back? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I don't want to forget anybody. Okay. Brawl. I don't there, think so. There's the big one from Brawl, and that's Snake. Mm. I don't think he'd come back, but here's the thing. Nintendo confirmed a list of at least 30 third-party companies that are already working on things for the Switch, and yep. Konami is one of them. Yeah. Wow, because they stopped making video games forever to make pachinko machines, so... <laughs> so what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Please make another Bomberman game. Please. Oh, uh, yeah. And just bring Bomberman to Smash. Please bring... Bomberman's actually my first choice for Smash. I just know he's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, but man. But there's no character I want more than Bomberman in Smash. He would work so well. He would. He fits in so well. I want Nintendo to just own that franchise, because he already seems like a Nintendo character. Yeah, absolutely. He's um, even got his own kart racer, just like Mega Man and Sonic and Mario. <laughs> that's like a qualifi- Yeah, it's like a qualification for getting it. And Pac-Man, <laughs> like all the third-party characters, except for like Ryu, Cloud, and uh, the DLC third-party characters have their own kart racer, and Bomberman does. That's I didn't know that. That's yeah. really cool, actually. Dude, Bomberman's got like seventy-five games. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. Yeah, well, why not more of that? Yeah. It's just um, none of them in the past, like, eight years. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Snake has a chance of coming in for the Switch port? I would say not likely, but the Konami confirmation uh, third-party support is... Hopeful. Uh, could it happen? <laughs> yeah. I'd love for it to happen. I don't think it's going to, but I'd love to. Yeah. I think it's still not likely, even though we got the Konami confirmation. Uh, the Konami Con. The Konami Con. But it's possible, I guess. Um, yeah. Is there anyone else from Brawl that didn't make it? At this point, well, Ice Climbers. Right. Uh, Wolf. Yes. Pokemon Trainer. I, gosh, I hope we don't forget anybody, but I don't think so. I think the rest of them are in. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think they are. Um, mm-hmm. So what about newcomers? Inklings. Yeah, Inklings make the most sense. I, <laughs> if they do add newcomers, it would be stupid not to add Inklings. It would be. Especially because Inklings are coming to the Switch as well. Like, they're already making that transition. And just just since Splatoon's launch, it's been incredibly popular. Incredibly popular. Oh my Ooh, god. Ooh, nice one. I just made that pun. Uh, um, Splatoon's sales, just going pure sales-wise, which I don't think is how a game should be judged, but clearly that's going to have some influence. Splatoon's sales are the best, it's the best-selling first game in a franchise Nintendo's ever done since Star Fox. And that's Whoa. not including Pokemon, because that's Game Freak. Like, since Star Fox, Splatoon is the most successful first entry in a franchise. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I just thought of Animal Crossing, but that wasn't the, the first, first game. The first one wasn't as successful as New Leaf. Right, okay. The first one was Japan only on the N64. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So that got ported to the GameCube, and that's the one we know. So that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And Pikmin, I love it so much, but it was just not as financially successful as Splatoon was, because it's very niche. Right. But, yeah, Inklings makes so much sense. Um, it's it's weird that we've gotten so many characters that everyone wanted in this match. Like, it's actually hard to think of newcomers that you'd want that would be likely. I Here's what I think. Yeah. I think 
from the poll that they did, we only got Bayonetta out of that poll, but they still have all that information. That's I think true. if they do new characters, I think characters who got who were very popular in the poll who got Me Fighter costumes are very likely for this. I think K. Rule has a good chance. Hmm. I think I think Gino actually has a chance. Sakurai has so? confirmed that he's wanted to put him in since Brawl, and he ha- got the rights for the Mii Fighter costume. I know it's super hopeful, but I think there's a small chance, more so than there ever has been, that Gino could actually make it in. Yeah. Uh, I think I legitimately think Breath of the Wild Link is a an option because so. Breath of the Wild is like the huge system seller for the Switch right off the bat, yeah. and maybe they'd be like, oh, let's bring in like. Switch stuff into the Smash Brothers because yeah. that helps all the other. Well, the it promotes thing, the Switch. It promotes more. the Switch. Although I know Sakurai is never really concerned with that. He put Ryu in despite Street Fighter Five immediately then coming out only for the PlayStation. Well, right. Uh, he's just a great. Sakurai character. just kind of does his own thing, but I know Nintendo would love it if they would <laughs> support the Switch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think if if Breath of the Wild Link got in, I don't think people would be like, oh, another Link. I think people would be like, hell yeah, another yeah, Link. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think people. That, I think that would. Only be I think that's exactly thing. the case. I think that would only be a positive uh, thing. Let me think of other newcomers who I legitimately think have a chance getting in, because that's tough. Mm. Uh, there's a lot that I'd love to see, but I don't think will happen. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see Ridley get in, but not be shrunken at all. I'd love to see just a playable, ridiculously huge Ridley. Yeah, like, what if Like, he's... just not balanced at, by any means. Just <laughs> completely unbalanced, playable Ridley. Like, what if he's just the biggest character? Like, yeah, that... and, like, t- three times the size of Bowser. Like, I'm talking, like, actual Ridley size. Yeah, no, I'm following you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, just, if you want to play Ridley, have, like, four people on a team against you. Or just be <laughs> way too powerful. It doesn't have to be balanced. It's Smash Brothers. It's silly fun. They would figure out a way you to balance it. You could still die to the beetle uh, uh, item as Giant Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> they, they would figure out a way to balance him if, if they did that, I'm sure. Yeah, but I don't think they will. No, unfortunately uh, I not. think there's a chance Isabel from Animal Crossing could get in. Yeah. She's super popular. Animal Crossing absolutely warrants two characters, perhaps even more, if there were more characters that were, like, fighting ready. But Isabel's kind of like the face of that franchise. I think she could get in. Mm. And she'd probably not be too hard to put in because she's already an assist. They have the model for her ready. That's true. Uh, I don't know. Takamaru is rising in popularity. Sakurai wanted to put him into Smash 4. That'd be cool. Oh, oh. Actual, like I think this is very likely. Yeah. Uh, Something from Rhythm Heaven. There is files in the game. Oh, yeah. That... Uh, lead us to believe that Rhythm Heaven was supposed to have a playable character. It was planned to. That was cut for one reason or another. So whatever they were working on might make it into the Switch version. Yeah, maybe they'll decide that maybe that was a good idea and they'll include it. So that, I think, that'd be cool. I mean, rumor has it it was the Chorus Men and maybe they were cut for the same reason Ice Climbers were. Yeah. So maybe it's like, well, now we could do it. Now we have the technology. That's possible, yeah. Rhythm Heaven is the only franchise in Smash Run that has an enemy that isn't playable. Besides Ice Climbers, so... <laughs> that is very specific. It's really weird. They're the only one that fits into that category. Yeah. Um, and, of course, we mentioned Ridley before. We don't think that's going to happen as much as we want it to. Mm-hmm. But um, what do you think about them including... It's hard to say another Metroid character, but, like, Dark Samus. What if that... Happened? I would love Dark Samus. I think Dark Samus is the most obvious next choice yeah. since Ridley's not possible. She's got unique moves as an assist. They already have, like, the visuals for them. Yeah. I'm sure it wouldn't be impossible... I don't know. Yeah. I feel like there's other higher priority things. I think Paper Mario has a chance because he got two games this year being... That's true. Or he was in two games this year being Paper Jam and Color Splash. And yeah, they might not be everybody's favorite Paper Marios, but it's the most Paper Mario per year that we've ever had. And he seems to be rising in popularity despite the protests of a lot of his fans. Uh, Yeah. So I think he's possible. It's possible for sure. He got a stage in the 3DS version. He did. It's happening. Yeah. And at um, least a moveset based off Color Splash would be better than a moveset based off Sticker Star. So I'd rather yeah. him come in now than in the base game. That's true. Um, I don't know. What else can we talk about here? Um, about Smash Brothers? Just about anything. Oh, you, you mentioned new stages. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? Because I haven't even thought about that. I just I, thought of, oh, 3DS stages. Yeah, I don't really know. They could easily just redo some 3DS stages in HD and make those the new stages. That would be great. Yeah. Um, in terms of if they did new stages, 
I think that would depend on if there were new characters, they would get stages. Oh, that's true. We could probably get, like, a Splatoon stage if Inklings get in. Right? Like, that would be perfect. That would make sense. That would be... And that would just be a great stage. Like, the, Dude, the layouts of maps in Splatoon are so Everything in Splatoon is so ready for the Smash Brothers stage. I want, yeah. like, a Splatfest stage that's, like, at night with the lights and the squids <sighs> fighting in There's the background. There's so many... Or the uh, squid sisters performing. So much possibility with yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know. Other stages idea. Stages are harder to predict. I mean, definitely. we could get Xenoblade Chronicles X stage. Yeah. Yo. Primordia would be amazing. Oh, stop. Oh, the music. <laughs> stop. It'll never happen. <laughs> no, it'll totally happen. When, if not this Smash Brothers, Smash 5 will have something from X. It could, yeah, it, for sure. If Xenoblade got in, Xenoblade Chronicles X is the next in the franchise. They're, like, obligated. <laughs> yeah. What else could they do? For Smash Brothers, that could be its own whole discussion. That's true. Let's yeah. move on with more Switch stuff. Because some of the companies that were confirmed to be supporting the Switch are really surprising. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know a lot of them, but here's the ones I knew, or here's some of the ones I knew, and here's how I think of it. There are the obvious ones. Sega is supporting it. Yep. Uh, Namco Bandai, Capcom, like, yeah, we knew these companies were supporting it. Uh, Square Enix, a little bit more surprising, but mm -hmm. we do know that Dragon Quest XI is already confirmed for it from yep. back when the NX was first announced. Yeah. So that's super exciting, and I love seeing Nintendo and Square working together again. I, I love it too, yep. Uh, Konami, we already addressed. Yep. Surprising. Bethesda? Bethesda. Shocking. We already saw Skyrim, Skyrim. on it. Yep. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, so I... I am... Was actually... Okay, when I first saw it, I wasn't actually sure if it was, like, the next Elder Scrolls game, but a lot of people are saying it's Skyrim, so I'm sure it's Skyrim. Um, there has been talks about a sequel to Skyrim. Uh, oh, there has? Not not that this is it, but that that's happening. Like, I heard that before this announcement, like, oh, they've been, like, hinting at a sequel to Skyrim. Oh. Or so, I don't follow Elder Scrolls very well much, but that's just what I've heard. Oh, cool. I didn't uh, know. Take that with a grain of salt. Maybe do some research of your own if you're excited by that. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, but I... That just looked like HD Skyrim. I love the idea of Skyrim being on a Nintendo console, and let alone it, it being the Switch, so... <laughs> and it's not like, oh, they just got a port later. It's like, oh, it's Skyrim on the go for the first time ever. Yeah. Like, that's a huge deal. Yeah, if you're not, like, a PC gamer, then totally, it's... That's true. Well, PC gaming is a little bit not so much on the go. I guess on a laptop. A laptop, yeah, but... But you even to... then, you can't... It's not super easy to log around. Right. And, like, set up on a moment's notice. Um, this is definitely more convenient than that. And then the other ones that were really shocking to me were like some of the engines, Unreal Engine and Havoc are running on it. That's There's a lot of games that run those. That's amazing. Yeah. But From Software is supporting this. And they make Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. The Dark Souls company <laughs> is working on something for the Switch. Yep. Um, who knows what the hell that is, but... Also Ubisoft. That's another, Ubisoft, we, yeah. yeah. We know that there's a Just Dance game and something else coming to it, so... Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, Atlas I'm not a huge Ubisoft fan. They screwed us over with Redman Legends. <laughs> but um, Atlas is another one that's Oh, yeah. Big. Persona. Yeah. Uh, our friend Jared was super excited to see Atlas on that list. Yeah. Uh, EA. No, nobody likes EA. Activism. Even if you like EA's games, you don't like EA as a company. That's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they were actually voted, like least like company in America like two years in a row or something oh my god um I can't remember any more at the top of my head but me neither those are pretty exciting all of those um a lot of third party oh, support gracious. yeah that's always really a hopeful sign I feel like this is the kind of thing where third party companies heard about and they were like oh my god yeah let's at least try this like yeah. this is such a unique thing yeah I think it was Ubisoft who commented on the NX before it was released or the Switch now I think um, you're right. They they said something like like it's really unique and awesome, <laughs> and we're like really excited to like try new things on it. Yeah, uh, I I think it's hilarious how with like Steam or Valve and Sony and Microsoft, they're all like pushing really hard on the virtual reality mm -hmm. thing. Like with that, the like PlayStation's got like a headset now, and you can like play virtual reality games. Yeah, and Nintendo's like. And they're like every like in the industry, like analysts are like, oh, this is gonna revolutionize it. And then people like at home are like, that's a thing. Like nobody can afford it because right. it's ridiculous. And then they're like, wait, what if we revolutionize gaming as a whole in just an entirely different direction, like <laughs> much faster and with a much bigger resonance with fans? Yeah, like they they definitely took a different route. I know what you mean. Like, oh man, they never do what everybody else is doing, and I love them so much for it. Yeah. Do you think we could see, uh, like, all right, Mario and Zelda are 
are launch titles, meaning they've got their two biggest games of the system out of the way already. Yep. Do you think we could see smaller franchises like Star Fox F Zero, uh, pick well Pikmin Four is already on the way, but like, do you think we could see smaller franchises like that get games showing up uh, at launch or in general? No, just in general. In like general. not even first year. But do you think we could like get an F Zero finally? Because think of it like this: Nintendo was always making games for two systems, 3DS and Wii U, or DS and Wii U, or GameCube and Game Boy Advance. There's been a Mario Kart on every system. Like, there was a GameCube Mario Kart, DS Mario Kart, Wii Mario Kart, 3DS Mario Kart, Wii U Mario Kart. Yeah. With handheld and consoles being one, instead of making two racing games in one console generation, having both of them be Mario Kart, maybe they could make two racing games in a console generation and have a Mario Kart Switch down the line, and not like the an port, F-Zero. and an F-Zero. Yeah. That's, that's a very interesting point. Um... I mentioned my random desire to have a Kid Icarus game. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that. Um, Duck Hunt Uprising. Duck Hunt Uprising. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, you know, when the Wii came out, I don't know exactly how early this came out, but Punch Out Wii is one of Not my early. <laughs> that was... That was late? That, that was like mid. mid. Okay. That was what, 2009 or 10? And the Wii U came out in 2006 or 7? Probably. So like a few years after. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know when this would happen, but I would love a new Punch Out game. I think that's super possible, I, especially because I, I don't know what the company that like that studio that made Punch Out Wii is doing right now. So who did make that? The people that did Federation Force. Oh really? And Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Oh, I wouldn't put those three games together. <laughs> right? They're an interesting studio. They put out <laughs> solid games. So yeah. Huh. Um, they did other stuff before that, too. But yeah, I feel like maybe they'll do another Punch-Out. I'd love to see another Punch-Out. I would adore that. It's more popular than ever because of Smash Brothers now, so... <laughs> True. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I know Xenoblade Chronicles X was recent, but I would love a new Xenoblade game somewhere in the Switch's lifespan. It'll, oh, uh, Platinum Games was on the list of third-party developers. And, you okay. know, there you go. So there you go. Um, also, that's a Nintendo franchise, so that's going to happen anyway. I'd love to see another Wonderful 101 Ooh. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be... Uh, it's been hinted at in unique ways. It has. Kamiya, huh? the guy who like directed it di- right before E3 this year, was like, oh, there's 102 wonderful things I'd love to see announced at E3. And then there was no sign of it whatsoever. It was just like this weird tweet he sent out that really <laughs> hinted at something that did not at all happen. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's really... But he's always done stuff like that. It's really bizarre. He also did Bayonetta, and he would block anybody who mentioned Smash Brothers to him because he was so annoyed at people asking for him to put Bayonetta in Smash Brothers. And then when Bayonetta was revealed, he was like, yeah, I, I just couldn't say anything. <laughs> Any final thoughts? I guess just I, besides loving everything about it. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, Thank God. Oh man. I actually often mentioned to Sky how I have just generally more time for handheld games than home console games. I don't even know what the reason is for that. I just happen to... Because you can play them anywhere. <laughs> I guess that's it. I don't know. Like, I'm home pretty often, though. But whatever. I love the idea of the opportunity they're giving us to play HD home console games anywhere you want. It's just, like, the number one thing I want in a system, period. Dude, same here. It's It just looks perfect. I really don't have any complaints about Seriously. it. Seriously. <laughs> uh, I have a similar thing to James... But kind of the opposite. I have... Well, not the opposite. I have more time to play handheld games as well, because I can play them anywhere. But mm-hmm. I generally prefer console games, which leads to me just not playing a lot of video games not on the show. <laughs> I just don't... I'm like, oh. Like, oh, I want to go play that Color Splash. I want to get further than that. But I can't right now. Oh, well. I'll just not do anything <laughs> related to playing video games. Uh, I'll just keep drawing. Uh, so this will give me the opportunity to play like RPGs and sit down and play them anywhere because I don't have to commit to I have Earthbound on my Wii U James has it on the 3DS despite me starting like a year and a half earlier than him (laughs) he finished before I did Yeah, but that's not an issue anymore Uh, also I've played Earthbound in the past anyway so that that was a factor but yeah but um, it's, it's just so exciting knowing what it is now and knowing that a lot of the rumors were true about it Port Mother 3 do that. Do that, Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's my final comment. <laughs> that's just the last thing we'll say. That's my final comment to any <laughs> Nintendo-related discussion. <laughs> All right. Any final, final thoughts? I, I guess that's it. I'm really excited to just get my hands on one and see how it feels. Yeah, March is pretty soon. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. 
Somebody did the research. I saw a chart. This is the shortest time between the reveal of the system and its release ever for any video game system. We, yeah, I don't know why they waited so long, but... Well, the I, world exploded. I did you see that it was the number one trending video on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. I think it still is, but anyway. I think it was smart. I think they avoided releasing information about it at the same time as any other company releasing any information about anything. Yeah. Like, if they announced this at E3, it'd be competing with this Xbox Scorpion and the PlayStation 4 station. I don't know what the new PlayStation's called. but I forgot to. Uh, yeah. They completely avoided that. They still won E3 by announcing one game and having it be the most talked about thing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Breath of the freaking wild. It's amazing because I feel like, I felt like since Smash Wii U came out, Nintendo was in a period of just like, Transition, Like, I felt it right away. Like, they only announced spinoffs. Uh, like, this is nothing to the quality of the game. They're just all spinoffs. Like, Pockin, Happy Home Designer, Federation Force, Colors. Like, it's all been spinoff games. That's true. Uh, and everybody's like... And people were like, oh, no, at E3. Like, the last two E3s, like, what? They didn't announce these big titles, Breath of the Wild and Command. And I, I kind of always had this feeling, like, they're gearing up for something. Like... They're, I think they're still making these huge games. Like, I think there's still a new 3D Mario coming. I think they're just waiting for the next system. Yeah. And it seems like that's the case. I feel like they suddenly, they, like, took a lot, a lot of time yeah. just making uh, Switch games. And, and we yeah. just got a bunch of, like, it's been, a, like, a rough two years for Nintendo game-wise. Like, it's been only a few games here and there, and they've been spinoffs. Or they've been, you know, Pokemon or Kirby who do their own thing because they're second party yeah and they've yeah. been doing great like robobot was fantastic sun and moon <laughs> looks insanely good yeah uh but yeah i feel like we're suddenly it's the other foot is coming down we're get we're about to get hit by a lot of games and i i didn't think about the spinoff thing before you said it but that makes a lot of sense saving the major zelda mario whatever. animal crossing didn't get a major wii u game yeah like saving all the big titles for just the next thing that they know will be successful or more successful than the wii u at least um, Everything would be more successful. <laughs> I love I, the Wii U. Today. It's my favorite system. It's great. But, but <laughs> it, it did not do well. Yeah. I tried my best. <laughs> you tried your best. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yeah. It's it's smart, you know, realizing that this whole plan is all, all on purpose and they're saving yeah. everything for the Switch. This is also... Uh, here's the final thing we can talk about. This is Iwata's last console that he had a hand in with oh, Nintendo. Oh, man. Yeah. He, this is what he was working on when he passed. And... Uh, He's in, been involved in every system Nintendo's done in one way or another since the NES with uh, Balloon Fight, so... That's really something. Um, it's the end of an era, but this end of the era is just starting right now, and it's super exciting, because, of course, he'd bring us the best-looking system I've ever of seen. Of course. It, it, of course it's a Wada. <laughs> yeah, of course. It, oh, I that, miss him so much. That man's a genius. Um no, yeah, and he, he, he went out with a bang, you could say. <laughs> yeah. This is really looking like something um, that this... everyone's going to love, I think. I hope. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody complain about it. Like, you got to just be the kind of person who complains about everything to not love this idea. I, I think I have, like, I have seen, like, a very few number of complaints, and some of it involves, like, oh, this is gimmicky. Like, someone, you know, just happens to think it's not. Of course it's gimmicky, but... First of all, the only non-gimmicky Nintendo system there's been was the GameCube, and it was their worst-selling system until the Wii U. And two, like, that's what makes it so special. Like, I don't I don't think it's gimmicky. I don't think it's... Well, I don't think gimmicky is a bad thing. I think that's more of a definition thing. No, no, that's you're fair. right. I just, I just happen, you know, I like, I don't categorize it as gimmicky. I categorize it as, like, this is new and interesting and innovative. Like, yeah. That's just how I look at it. I think, yeah, I think that's just the better way of phrasing it. Like, the Wii was gimmicky and also revolutionized gaming for, like, nine years, and then Sony and Xbox both copied motion controls off of them. <laughs> they they kind of So, did. look out in three years when Xbox and PlayStation have an on-the-go version that connects to your TV. It will probably it's happen. It's absolutely going to happen. <laughs> It'll probably happen. They're like, oh, Nintendo, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's all they do. <laughs> that's unfortunately true. Um, or at least they have done it in the past, for yeah. sure. Um, just I just love the idea of some guy, exciting. like, in the, like, PlayStation or Xbox headquarters, like, wearing this ridiculous virtual reality, like, helmet with, like, gloves on, like, wired to a wall, just, like, hearing the news and just, like, with the helmet on, just turning it on and be like, oh, shit! <laughs> I thought we were ahead of them this time! <laughs> this isn't what they were doing? 
<laughs> I haven't moved in four days. I don't know if there's any more to say about it. I think that's it. I, Thank you all. I mean, do you have anything else? I don't think so. Um... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead and thank the people. <laughs> thank you all for listening to the third episode of our podcast. Uh, we'll have more podcasts coming. We've got lots of topics we'd love to talk about. Let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know what you think of the Switch. Yeah, please. Um, I love the sound effect that plays with the logo. Oh, yeah. Oh, the logo. It looks like a yin-yang symbol. Oh, yeah. man, I didn't even notice that. I just knew it was <laughs> where the control sticks were, but you're right. It totally does. That, too. Oh, it's a brilliant logo. It, like it's it. a much better logo than the Wii and the Wii U combined. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh. Um, and let us know, actually, if you have any ideas for podcasts for us to do. I know during a recent live stream, we talked about doing a podcast where we just do one-word stories the entire time. Yep. That'll probably be in an episode of Pokemon Yellow, actually. Because <laughs> oh, okay. an hour of that is a lot. Should we just do an hour-long episode of Pokemon Yellow? <laughs> no, that's, not, that's the opposite of what I'm saying, James. <laughs> okay, we'll figure that out. <laughs> anyway, let's play the outro song. Outro song. Yeah. That's the end of the podcast. Bop-a-doo, yeah. Bop-bop. My name is Guy. He's Jam. James Solo. Yeah, James. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye.